What's going on, Sumolings? Thank you so much for joining us for another product walkthrough webinar. I am Lindsay, and today I am joined by the team over at Marpipe. Marpipe is a multivariate testing platform that lets you build, launch, and analyze hundreds of ad creatives to automate the testing process. It is on AppSumo right now for a lifetime deal at $69, and uh, it has currently a five taco rating with 15 reviews after recently launching. Um, so it is a beloved tool so far. Before we dive into the walkthrough, though, I'm just going to tell you all a few quick things. The first is that if you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, your use case, why you're interested in this tool, you can go ahead and do that in the chat room. Uh, the second, if you have any questions about the tool, the deal, how to get set up, go ahead and leave those questions in the Q&A box down below this video. Um, we're going to circle back to questions at the end of the walkthrough, but we also have uh, Sam here from the team to answer the questions as they come in. The last thing is that there will be a replay of this available. So uh, if you need to step out, that's cool. If you uh, just want to watch this, that's you're falling asleep at night, also cool. Um, all right, that's enough of me. Hey, Dan, how are you doing? Hey, what's going on, Lindsay? I'm doing well. I am doing good. I am excited to have you here. I am going to pass this over to you for the walkthrough. Let me know when you want to take some questions. Cool. Awesome. Sounds good. Um, all right. So hi, Simo Links. Uh, my name is Dan. Um, I'm the founder of Marpipe. Um, We've been live on AppSumo for just a few days now, but have been totally blown away uh, by the reaction and the feedback that we've been getting from you all. Um, and, uh, and I'm super excited to uh, show you firsthand exactly how uh, Marpipe works and how you can best utilize it um, to totally automate your creative testing um, and be able to have uh, total creative testing superpowers. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen um, and I'll go ahead and do a walkthrough right now, but I've got one of my team members, Sam, who's uh, ready to answer any of your questions as, uh, as we go along. Um, so the best place to start, so this is the homepage and this is what you'll see when you log into Marpipe for the first time. Um, so here we just have um, a bird's eye view of what's going on in our account. We have some really awesome quick start video tutorials to guide you through any part of the process if you ever get lost or confused. Um, and also on that point, we have a live chat. So if you click this unicorn, it'll toggle on our intercom chat where you can just at any time uh, hit up me or my team to uh, ask us any questions. Um, so we'll put that away for now. Um, and also one thing that's important to note is that um, over here in the top right corner under active accounts, um, you have all your different workspaces. So if you're an agency uh, that has multiple different clients and brands with different ad accounts, um, you can just go ahead and create new accounts here in settings. Um, settings is over here and there's no cap on the amount of workspaces or accounts that, um, that you're able to create. Um, so, uh, so here we're going to be working with, um, just a fake brand that we made up called furniture co. Um, and, uh, and we'll go ahead and, um, in the next few minutes, um, I'm going to show you how we can create 100 incredible looking ads, how we can launch those all to our Facebook business manager, um, and run them as live creative tests on Facebook and Instagram. And then we're going to analyze not only to see which ads were the best of all the ones that we ran, but also what do people love and hate most about our ad creative? That's the kind of level of intelligence that we can get from running multivariate tests. This is why we've spent so much time building a tool to automate the entire process. Um, and we'll be able to do everything that I just said in just a few minutes. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how it works. Um, we'll go ahead and dive in here. The best place to start is going to be the asset library. So the asset library is the place where you would upload all of the really the visual ingredients that are the components that go into your ads. So here for this example here, we have some product images of some furniture that we have. We have some frames that we might use in our creative. We have some branded uh, colored and textured backgrounds and we have some logos. Um, so really simple. Um, most brands uh, already have these kinds of assets 
Um, if you're an agency, your clients definitely do, or you're the one creating these assets for your clients. Um, but really easy to just pop your assets in here. All you need to do is just click add files and then you can just browse and highlight the, um, everything that you wanna put in there. Um, I'll just give a quick example of um, how easy uploading is. So we'll go to Finder and I'll go to my pictures and I'll go to um, da, 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 sample creative. Um, we'll go to Banana Corp. We'll do some, we'll upload some pictures of bottles. So all we do is just, we can just highlight the files that we want to pop into Marpipe and literally just drag and drop them. And you can just drag and drop as many files as you want in here from wherever it is that you have your creative assets and they're just gonna pop into your asset library. Um, a cool thing to note is that if you click on any asset, um, you'll get this right panel appears where we actually have machine vision. That's every asset that you upload is being scanned by machine vision that automatically tags it and identifies what's in the picture. So here we already have the tags, furniture, chair, armchair. Um, we didn't put this in, you didn't put this in. Um, this is automatic whenever you upload an asset. So we'll see how that comes in useful in a second. And then also um, we have our copy assets. So these text assets over here um, are the, the messaging variables that would go into any of our creative experiments. So we'll go ahead and add a new text asset and I'll call this uh, app sumo demo is the title of the text and then for the actual copy for the messaging I'll I'll say something like sumo links can out test the internet so let's just say this is an example of a messaging or a value prop that we want to we want to experiment with in our creative so we'll go ahead and create that and uh, these colors, by the way, are just randomly generated and therefore organizational purposes. We can click on any text asset and we can just change it to whatever color we want if, if we wanna do that. Um, so let's say that we've got everything in here that we wanna have in our asset library um, and we've just put in all the ingredients that are gonna go into our ad creative. Uh, now we're ready to build an experiment. So let's go ahead to pop over to experiments so here in experiments, we have some, some previous drafts that I made. Um, I'll go ahead and click create new experiment. And so there's two ways we can go here. We can start from a template. So temp, we have over 100 um, creative templates for best practice, high performing, direct to consumer and e-commerce templates for ad creative. These are examples of ad creatives that we know work well they span all across the board, so many different types of things, types of products. Um, there's definitely gonna be one here that, that is probably a fit for whatever, whatever type of business you have, whether it's B2B or direct to consumer. Um, you can pop open any of these and click start from here and then just start customizing them with your own brand assets and just tr transform one of these best performing templates into uh, a template for ads that you can make for your brand. Um, but for this, that's the easy route. For here, let's take, um, let's take the customized route here. So we'll start with a blank canvas. Um, so we'll call this experiment AppSumo Demo. And what we do is we're landing here into this, um, into this ad builder experience, right? So this experience is optimized to be used by it, it's built to be used by both professional creatives and by marketers who are not creatives at all so for instance me myself i'm not a creative or a designer i've never made any ads but the way that you can use this ad builder is really simple drag and drop functionality uh, that really anyone could do uh, as long as they have a good asset library so before we start dragging and dropping assets it's important to note with this artboard, we can change the background color and we'll make that a deep purple. Um, we can change the dimensions from to landscape or to mobile optimized here. We'll go back to square. We'll use a square for this example. We can also toggle on a grid that is a little bit hard to see when you have, yeah. So that's what the grid looks like. Just helps for alignment. 
Um, so we'll go ahead and bring it back here. So what we want to do is we want to start building a creative template. Now, keep in mind, I'm not building an ad right now. I'm building a template. And there's a key difference, even though they might seem really similar. So first, I'll go ahead and pop in a background color. So boom, there it goes. And it's taking up the whole artboard. And then what we want to do is just build a piece of creative for our furniture brand. So I'll go ahead and pop in one of our products. So let's make that a little bigger. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and we'll pop in um, our copy that we just made, our messaging variable. Let's put that up in the headline position. All right. And then, so what's important with copy assets here is that you can actually, you have all the standard text editing tools that you would normally expect to have anywhere else. So here we can, we can play with a font. So a really popular font for, um, for e-commerce ads is Rallaway. Boom. So we'll put that there. And then, um, and then also let's change the text color to white. There we go. Um, and, uh, and so here we go. Uh, we've got our copy here. We've got a product image. Um, let's also go ahead and throw in our logo. And we'll put that over here. So, so and also, you know what? Let's actually, just for the, for the sake of this, let's throw in a frame. So let's do one of these. So, boom. So let's pop that in there. And then let's arrange, here we have all the layers in, in the composition that we have here. So, We'll just make sure that this fits inside the frame. And then we'll also drag our logo in there. Okay, so what we've got here is, what we've got here is an example of a piece of creative that we might run, right? So what we have in this artboard here is five layers, right? So we have our logo, we have our, first off we have our background, then we have our frame, then we have our product image, and then we have our, our, um, our copy, our main messaging in the headline area, and we have our logo. So we already know that the presence of all of these creative variables, if they were to be changed or altered in any way, that would have a big impact on our performance. And so we want to know exactly how uh, different, different, vi different visual stimuli or different creative hypotheses or creative variables that we might have. We want to learn how these impact our performance. So we want to run a really comprehensive multivariate test in order to find that out. So let's say that this is the example of the creative that we want to run. And what we want to do is make a lot of different versions of this in order to find out what's the best possible one. So this is where the magic happens. We're no longer dragging and dropping or designing when we enter variance mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter variance mode. So now you'll notice that this matrix appears on the right hand. So I'm, I can no longer edit or drag and drop or resize any of these assets. Um, all I can do is just pull more things from the asset library and drag and drop them. So for instance, let's, let's go ahead and test different products. So we want to we want to discover which product works best for different types of audiences. So we're going to go ahead and pop those in. Um, we also want to know um, how different copy influences our performance. So let's try 20% off this week only. Let's also try $15 off because we know that percent off and dollars off 
definitely results in a big difference in performance. And let's also put in some eco-friendly copy. So 100% environmentally friendly. You'll notice that the text automatically resizes to fit within the frame that you select. Um, so you won't run into any problems there. Um, now, what we wanna do is also experiment with the background. Um, so, oops, that went into the frame position. So we can either put in the, app, the, the variants that we wanna include here. We can either drag and drop them onto the canvas or we can make those variants here. So like for instance, this is where the background color is. So I can create a new variant of the background color and I can go ahead and just drag and drop that asset right into there. And then boom, we're gonna see that version. And let's do another one. Let's do this cool little spacey one that we have. Boom, wow, look at that. Um, and then, you know what, let's throw in this weird zany orange one yeah all right cool so we also want to know how does actually let's then also throw in a variable on our frame so let's try let's try that frame cool there we go we also want to know how does the presence of a logo influence performance so maybe we want to create a version of this where the logo isn't even present. So if we click this here where there's an empty spot, we'll see that the logo goes away. So I'm going to stop right here real quick um, and just zoom out for a second. So I just created 256 ads. So if you look over here on the right panel, you'll see 256 creatives, right? How is that possible? So first off, our background color, we have four background colors, right? Then we have four products. We have four versions of copy. We've got two logo variations and we've got two frame variations. Um, so we've got two times two times four times four times four is how we get 256. This is every possible permutation of all of these creatives. Now, to make this a little bit more palatable and easy to work with later on, um, I'm just gonna take out maybe one of these variables and that's gonna significantly reduce our creative just down to 128. Um, and so now we have 128 ads here. Let's see what they look like and click generate. So what we're gonna see is a creative grid that's gonna be rendered. Today, we talk to creatives all the time that are spending days out of their weeks, create, both creatives and marketers, that are spending days out of their weeks, uh, literally just dragging and dropping stuff on canvases to create every possible version of different creatives. So here, we've just automatically rendered out and created all of the possible versions of our creative. Look at that. So one thing that's important to note is we've got full creative control over the experiments that we're testing. This isn't some AI making random ads for you. We can control through the design of our template, which is really easy to just drag and drop around exactly what all of these variations of our creative could look like. So we just did the work of a creative team that might take them maybe a few days to do, and we've just done it in a few minutes. So let's say that we're looking at this and we're like, yeah, this is cool. This is a, this is a perfect multivariate grid. It's got every possible combination of the variables we want to experiment with. Now, we can either download this and we can send it to our team. We can use it for whatever we want. We can send it to our client um, and we'll just have like a really clean zip file with full resolution pictures of this just by clicking download. Or if we're ready to rock with this as, an, as a real live creative experiment, we can just click launch. So Marpipe is already connected to Facebook. In settings, you'll be prompted when you first sign in, you'll be prompted to connect your Facebook account, at which point you just associate uh, a particular ad account, Facebook page and Instagram page with a Marpipe account. So we're already connected here. I'm just gonna click Facebook I'll click traffic as my campaign type. And by the way, Facebook means Facebook and Instagram too. 
Um, so it's for it's for both um, both platforms. Um, and here we land in this place where we just need to fill in the few other things that we need to actually dispatch this to Facebook as a full suite of ads. So we have out of image copy here. Now we know that like every Facebook ad has a headline and body copy, right? So let's do version one here and let's do short headline and let's do short body copy, right? And let's say we want to experiment with a longer version of our copy, right? Because we know that like the size of our copy definitely influences how these ads perform. So let's create another version. So let's do long, let's do V2 here. And let's do long headline, pretending this is a place where we're writing a long headline and long body copy. Um, and so we can just go ahead and create these two out of image copies. Now you'll see over here, it just appears two out of image copies. Call to action, let's do shop now. Audiences. Now this is also a place for to imp include variables for experimentation. So with our audience, these are pulling all the audiences that are saved in our Facebook ad account that is connected to Marpipe with this account. So we already are, we're just automatically pulling all the audiences that you already advertised to or any saved audiences that you have in general. So we can see all of our audiences that we have here. Let's say that I want to run this experiment against maybe my best performing pixel lookalike audience. And also maybe I want to run this test against a cold prospecting audience that I've never really marketed to, but I'm really interested to find out exactly what they most want to see and hear from my company. So let's, let's, let's break into that. So let's select those two. So we have our two audiences here, right? Now we'll just fill in our URL. I'll just do marpipe.com. Cool. And we can play with our budget here. We can select our pixel. And also this is important. If you fall into a special ad category like politics or a credit or housing, you can select that here and it'll tell Facebook not to just automatically reject your stuff. <laughs> so, um, so here we go. So we've got that all set up over here. And on this panel over here, you can see what is our, the setup of our experiment look like. So we just built 128 creatives. We can always check them and look at them by clicking this button and it'll render those out for us again to take a look at. We have two audiences and two out of image copies. So 128 times two times two is how we get to 512 total ads that would be launched in this experiment. Now it's preset for a dollar to spend a dollar per ad per day for seven days. Um, but we can play with that over here and we can experiment. We can play with the budget um, to get to the desired level of ad spend that we want to see uh, for any particular, um, any particular experiment, right? Um, every ad account is different and every marketer has a different preference for how much data they want to see before they make scaling decisions. So we allow you to just take full control of that. Now, this is a really huge experiment. This one that I'm showing you that has 512 ads, I want to be clear. We do not recommend that folks who are new to multivariate testing dive in head first into running this many ads all at once out of nowhere. We have some clients that are testing at this level that are further along in their journey, but you want to start with smaller tests that are more bite-sized, palatable, so that we can iterate faster and learn faster in, in like shorter, shorter life cycles. Um, this is, I made a test that's really huge right now with a lot of ad spend, $3,500 in ad spend. I made a really huge test just to show you how far you can take this, but we can always scale back our experiment and make it to the size that we want. If we want to just dip our feet in the water, we can go back and we can take out some variables and just by even maybe deleting one of the out of image copies here, we've just significantly reduced the amount of ads that would be run. If we delete an audience, we're gonna significantly reduce, again, the amount. So we can always play with the variables and get to the amount of ads that we wanna run and play with the spend and get to the amount of, you know, the ad spend that we're comfortable with for experimentation. Best practice is that 70% of your spend should be going into your scale campaigns 
and 30% of it should be going into ongoing experiments so you can keep finding winners and getting better. And so if we click launch over here, this is what's gonna happen. It's gonna render this out one more time just so we don't end up launching anything by accident that we don't wanna launch. So we'll just see the, um, the creative experiment that we built one more time just so that we know for sure exactly you know that this is what we want to launch here are all the variations that we just created in just a few minutes cool this is the test that i wanted to run let's click next and then this is just a, essentially um a quick disclaimer saying hey this is really going to launch in your ad account with real ad spend are you are you are you are you um aware of that you click yes and then if I click launch right now, this will deploy automatically in my Facebook business manager in the selected ad account. It will turn itself on and then it will run for the amount of time that I set, spend this the amount per ad that I've set, controlling for spend, and then immediately turn itself off once it hits the seven days spend for $4 per ad per day, which is what we set here. So. I'm gonna show you real quick what this looks like in Facebook Business Manager. So, someone said they lost them. Just oh, can you guys hear me, by the way? I can hear you. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah. Cool. Someone said that they lost Yeah, them. I see that, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, cool, we're oh, good. Oh, this is good. All right, great. So, when you launch something through MarPipe, you're gonna see it in Business Manager, and I wanna show you what an example of a real MarPipe experiment launched in Business Manager looks like. So this is a new one that we just launched last night. Um, so here we can see, this is the name of the experiment, AppSumo test. So we'll go into the ad sets. Now, you'll see that we, we directed each ad to spend $1.43 per day. So, you can see a ton of ad sets in here. Why are there so many ad sets? Why aren't all the ads in one ad set? When you put all the creative in one ad set, Facebook's auto optimization takes over and ruins our ability to run a clean test. Because we all know that in an ad set, the first, the first ad that gets a few early bits of engagement is where all the spend is gonna go. And we wanna control for that in a clean experiment. So as a result, MarPipe automatically creates an ad set for every single ad. So we have 24 ad sets here. That means there's 24 ads in this experiment, right? We can go into the ad section and we can see those 24 ads, each with their own ad set. And we can see what they look like here. And here they are running like we told them to. So that's what it looks like in Facebook Business Manager, just so you know how the setup feels and feels like. And then you can interact with this as you would with any other um, campaign running. So once the campaign finishes running, you can find the winners and you can duplicate them out into your scale campaign or do whatever you want with them. So let's, let's go into the most important part and the final part of MarPipe. So why do we want to run experiments like the ones that I showed you, these multivariate tests that have so much different creative, you know, the point isn't just to throw a bunch of things at the wall and see what sticks. That's really just, that's what A-B testing is about, right? Just like coming up with some variables, throwing them out there, finding the winner. Multivariate testing not only allows you to find the winner of your creative, but also allows you to understand exactly what people love or hate most about your creative, right? This is a new type of intelligence and data you can collect in order to implement a more data-driven creative process so that going forward, you can make ads and run experiments in the future that you know will work better rather than just guessing and checking or arbitrarily taste making like most creatives um, typically do and which is normal in the industry today. Um, so let's look at what our intelligence looks like and how we can break into this data. So here we have our sample intelligence report You'll see this when you log into your account for the first time. Everyone starts off with this sample report. You can see there's 96 ads created here that ran in this experiment. This is the top line metrics of what's going on in the entire experiment. Here we have uh, all the ads that ran in the experiment. You can see them and they're ranked by performance. 
So this is the best ad that ran in this entire experiment. There were 96 ads. You can see the number one winning ad, the highest performing one, or you can go all the way, scroll all the way back, and that's number 96. This is the worst performing ad. And then we have everything in between, right? And you can see the variables being experimented with here in this creative experiment was background color, messaging, product, and so on. Similar to the test that we built just now. So the really cool part about multivariate testing and the type of information that you really can't get anywhere else other than through a multivariate test is this sort of asset intelligence, right? So what we have here is all of the variables that went into our experiment. And you can see here that, for instance, we tested four different backgrounds. Here we can see presence, meaning in the entire experiment, 25% of the ads in the whole experiment featured a yellow background. That makes sense because there's four possible backgrounds. So here we can see that every time the yellow background was shown, no matter what else it was combined with, no matter what messaging, out of image copy, product, no matter what other variables it was combined with, the average impact that it has on our performance is the $9 cost per result. Now, the second best variable, the second best uh, background color was purple, which came in second place at a cost per result of $15, right? These other three background colors that we tested are big losers and it's not even close. Yellow won by a country mile. So sorry for the background noises. It's New York City. There's sirens all the time. <laughs> uh, so here we've got our, um, our winning background color, yellow, right? We know that no matter what else this is combined with, no matter what other variables we combine it with, people don't like these other colors. They hate green and they really like yellow. Same idea for the products. Plush white is definitely the winner. Blue armchair sucks. People don't like the blue armchair. They don't want to see it. Um, now, what does this tell us, right? Same thing for our, our in-image copy, by the way. Award-winning furniture was the best variable. So now what we're doing is we're not just getting performance data on our ads, but we're getting performance data on the ingredients in our ads, the variables that are present within the creative and understanding how the presence of these different variables impacts our performance. So we know that these people really care about the fact that this furniture is award-winning and they really don't care about customizing their dream home. So what does that tell us? That means that we should go ahead and make more stuff like this, make more backgrounds like this yellow one, show more of our plush white furniture line and less of this other stuff that ends up at the bottom. This is not giving us specific creative instructions on what to do next, but it's data that guides us and informs us, hey, more stuff like this, less stuff like this, here's why your creative works. Now, the cool part is that the marketers also, if you're just a straight up performance marketer and the creative making better performing creative in the future doesn't matter to you because you don't touch creative at all. You can literally just say, all right, Marpipe, give me my top 10% of the ads here. And you can see the top 10% of ads right here. And you can just go ahead and just launch these in their own scale campaign, right? You can just identify the winners, the positive outliers, and then just throw them into a scale campaign and start spending money behind them. And that's an overnight performance win for your ad account. So, Marketers love it because when they test a lot of ads, you find winners. The more ads you test, the more winners you'll find. So that's, that's a performance win for marketers. But creatives like it because it tells them why, it gives them this level of insight on why their creative works that they would never really get otherwise. So, so we have a, a place where really marketers and creatives can even work out of the same workflow and understand each other in a way that they didn't before. Creatives can make better creative for marketers. Marketers can tell creatives why their creative works well. So all of the automation that we just saw in MarPipe about how to build so many versions of your creative and how to deploy them all without having a big agency with a campaign management team running it all, it's, that's all great. And that's a wedge into getting this sort of data-driven creative intelligence. So 
so that's um so that really um kind of wraps up um our uh, our, our our full demo here of Marpipe. Uh, as you keep testing for your clients, you keep collecting more and more of this treasure chest of creative intelligence that you can activate to essentially build creative that keeps getting better and better. Um, and your tests over time, obviously, also will start performing better and better if you follow the performance data for your assets. So I'm going to stop here. Um, I think we probably have a bunch of questions by now. So pass the ball back over to Lindsay and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions we might have. Thank you so much for walking us through that. Sumo Lings, if you wanna submit your questions now to the Q&A box, you can go ahead and do that. We do have some here. Um, technically they've already been answered, but the people in the replay don't know that. Um, is there an app to design the ads on Mac slash Windows? So we don't have, so you can design you can use Marpipe on any computer if you're connected to an internet browser. We do not have a, um, a Mac or a Windows uh, app, um, cool. but you should be able to access it from any computer as long as you have an internet connection um, on our website. All right. Is text color something that we can test? Of course, yeah, definitely. So in the, in the ad builder, um, when I uh, showed the, tech, the, the text um, editing tools, uh, you can you can put in different texts and also uh, play with the colors of it, and that can be a variable. And that's an awesome question because that's a popular test. And people are always testing the size, the color, the font, and also where the text appears. Whether it appears on the top of your creative or on the bottom of it or on the side has a major impact on performance almost always. And you should, if you're a sumo ling that is using Marpipe, that's one of the early tests you should do to find some really cool information about how people respond to your creative. Awesome, thank you. Um, are the templates searchable? Uh, no, but coming soon. So in our this spills into a little bit of our product roadmap. I was going uh, to ask that as a follow-up because I knew the answer was no. And so I was gonna say, <laughs> oh, can you tell us what else is coming up? Go. <laughs> wow, Matt, I'm Lindsay. Yeah, so <laughs> Um, so, so the template feature, the template library is super popular. We have over a hundred really high performing templates that anyone can plug and play into and drop their own assets into and make it their own. We know these templates are high performing for their industries. Um, and so it's really popular, but our template search and our template library is really limited right now to this just like pretty small window, um, with no search functionality in January. What you're gonna see, so even in just a few weeks from now, what you'll see is essentially a uh, fully built out searchable template library that's organized by industry types, creative types, product types. Um, and you can just start typing in and or even click around our navigation to find your industry and see what creative templates work best for advertisers in that industry and then plug and play it with your own assets. Um, now beyond that, we're also including asset packs. So like a lot of the different like shapes um, and, 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 and frames that you saw me use over there, like things like that are things that like, it's kind of annoying to find online and download and pull in. So we're just gonna have like really good direct to consumer e-commerce friendly asset packs that you can just activate to throw different icons and shapes and frames um, into your creative and make it look really piff. Cool. Um, all right. Are products uploaded as a PNG? Um, any suggestion for websites that can take a product image and remove the background? Two different questions. <laughs> so you can upload any image file, um, PNGs, JPEGs, um, Marpad works with all the image files. Um, and what was the second question? Uh, any suggestion for websites that can take a product image and remove the background? that can take a product image and remove the background. Um, yeah, there are sites that do that for a, I think it was like 50 cents per image or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, I definitely don't... have a deal on AppSumo right now. I think that does this. If you're on a Mac, you can do it with what? Preview. preview. Apparently if you're on a Mac, you can do it in preview. Uh, and obviously you can do it in the Adobe Creative Cloud um, I don't know off the top of my head um, any like 
turnkey to the name of the turnkey tools that can remove backgrounds for you, but I know that they're out there. And Lindsay, if you know any uh, AppSumo um, products. I'll yeah, know. someone says remove.bg. I know Pixelide offers removing backgrounds, but it's also like a full suite of right. graphic design. So if you're looking to do graphic design right. also. Yeah, and and that's a good question because I'm glad that people are already seeing that it's intuitive that like, yeah, you should have the background removed before you put the asset in MarPipe. That makes it the easiest to work with. So, cause you can plug and play it with other things in a really modular way. So. Totally. Yeah. All right. Um, can you explain four tests per month? Yeah. So what, so essentially um, what it comes down to is launching an experiment is considered a test. So when we click launch here and we pick that experiment that we just built and let's say we go through this journey that we just went through and we go ahead and we click launch and we deploy an experiment, that is one test, right? So obviously, as you can see through here, you can have so many creatives up to 1500. I made like 260, but you can have up to 1500 which no one has ever hit that limit before <laughs> ever been done so if one of you scrolling actually gets up to that level that is going to be a super fun conversation i'll reach out to you <laughs> personally and probably mail you a trophy or something uh, <laughs> but you can launch up to 50 so a test is a launch right so it's a it's a deployment of an experiment as you can see you can have up to 1500 creatives in it up to 1500 different ads and you can you can set your spend to whatever level you want. So in one test, you can test 1500 ads for $50,000 if you want to, right? So that is just considered one experiment, that's one test launch, and you have four of those per account. What I mean by account is here, um, back, if we go back to home, um, you can see these active accounts I have. So the, if I'm an agency and I have a lot of different um, clients that I work with, I can make an account for every, uh, every client um, and pa pair the ad account with that um, client's account in MarPipe. And each account has four launches. Um, so it's essentially per brand workspace, so to speak. Awesome. I love it. And those are all of the questions that we have for today. So we can go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Dan. Thank you, Sam. And thank you, Sumo Langs, for joining us. Um, if you have not already, you can go to appsumo.com slash marpipe to redeem your codes starting at $69 for a lifetime deal. And of course, this is backed by AppSumo's 60-day guarantee. So you can go ahead and get started, play around with it, see how this works for you. Like I mentioned earlier, it currently has a five taco rating with 15 reviews after launching just a few days ago. If you would like to add your reviews and comments, we do love to read them. You could put those on the deal page. And if you have any more questions, you could put those on the deal page as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. And thank you, Sam, for hanging out with us. Awesome. Have a good one. Nice.